Today is the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. The UN has pledged to end the gender imbalance in science by dismantling gender stereotypes and encouraging more women and girls to pursue scientific careers. Less than 30% of researchers around the world are women, but there are women working to make science more inclusive. One of those people is astrophysicist Lisa Harvey-Smith, who is also the Australian government's Women in STEM ambassador. She joins us now from Hobart. Lisa Harvey-Smith, good to talk to you again. How is Australia tracking in attracting more girls to study STEM subjects and women to enter the STEM workforce? Well, there's certainly a lot of work going on, which is very positive. For example, I was uh, appointed about a year ago as the first Australian government's Women in STEM ambassador. Um, we've also worked together as a, a community with research organisations, educators and governments around the country um, to create a Women in STEM 10-year plan. So that is tracking really well. We know what works, we know what doesn't work, uh, we know where the barriers are, and now we're pushing for real action. You mentioned barriers. Are there greater barriers for women from minority backgrounds? Absolutely, yes. Um, we know that intersectionality, that is the intersection between uh, gender and other attributes, can be really important and that can add layers when you have another attribute that, that means you're in a minority. Um, it adds layers of barriers, certainly, to women's progression. Um, we know that there are more barriers such as unconscious bias, um, which are faced by people from um, different uh, non-English speaking backgrounds uh, and different cultures as well from the dominant one. So a good example of this is in job applications, for example. Um, we know that you can see unconscious biases coming out in the shortlisting uh, and in the outcomes of those things. So we're working hard um, with some researchers um, to actually do a trial of anonymizing these processes so that we are literally just looking at people's attributes and their skills and experience instead of looking at their names and their genders. Why are those barriers there, given that, say, girls from South Asia are often encouraged to pursue careers in areas like technology? That's right. We do see a lot of global variations, actually, in the uptake of technology um, and engineering and science in particular. Um, certain countries in South Asia, as you say, in the Middle East um, and in South America have a large number of women. In fact, in some cases, a majority of women in engineering. And these are, these are real cu cultural um, kind of norms that are quite different from the norms that we have in Australia. Um, in Australia and in, in other Western countries, um, there is this sort of persistent feeling uh, and an impression that's given to young people that certain careers are for boys and certain careers are for girls. Um, and we see these things persisting um, throughout time and unfortunately still into the future. Uh, and I don't think those things are going away unless we push those barriers down very forcefully. Yeah, how do you go about even attempting to break down <laughs> those stereotypes? And some people would say that there are just uh, biological differences between girls and boys that see girls drawn to different subjects than boys are. Yeah, there's definitely a lot and a lot of research on this and it shows that a lot of those things are actually um, not inbuilt, they're pushed onto young people because of those cultural differences. You can see there are no inherent differences in skills, uh, in mathematics science um, between genders but what we're trying to do is get more role models into schools uh, for young people so that um, young people have a range of role models from different genders different cultural backgrounds and they can see the reality of working in science technology engineering and maths in stem subjects uh, and that is not the the typical stereotypical um, view of an old white man in a, in a lab coat um, just this week I've been working um, with an astrophysicist called Kat Ross um, who has looked to the New South Wales science curriculum for years 11 and 12, so students doing science at HSC level. And there are 70 men mentioned in that curriculum and only two women. So we've been working together um, with the New South Wales um, Education Standards Authority to try and um, change that situation. And it just goes to show even today in 2020 there are some real problems um, that we need to address. You mentioned their role models. I wanted to ask you how important having mentors and role models are. You said that you were appointed as the government's Women in STEM ambassador just a year ago. So so how long does it take for those roles to become really significant? 
Well, we can see that we're building momentum. Um, in the 1990s and 2000s, there was something called the Scully effect, after named after um, Dana Scully, a character, yeah, character in the X Files. And a lot of young women after that, you saw about of a 10-year lag. Um, a lot of women were becoming uh, scientists in her field. You see the forensic science actually ro rocket because of people in the media. So the media has a really important role to play, and it's great seeing more media outlets like the ABC using more women um, experts um, in their in their programming because we have to really see that in the public eye um, in schools and in all of our institutions so that girls and boys can see that anything you want to be you can um, we just need to change the system a little bit and make sure it's welcoming for everyone yeah you can't be what you can't see Lisa Harvey Smith thanks so much for taking the time to speak to us tonight pleasure